This boy is a little strange. Every day he goes to school, he is dirty, his face is blue and purple, and his books are often torn. The most special thing is that every day at noon, the classmates are eating the bento that he brought, but he never brings the bento, and drinks tap water every noon to satisfy his hunger. His name is Stanley, and he's a quirky, multi-talented boy, who sometimes even dreams in the bee box. He also often told stories to his classmates, which made everyone laugh. So Stanley's popularity in the class is not bad. It was lunchtime again, and Stanley watched his classmates eat all kinds of delicious bento with nothing in his hands. He could only walk out of the classroom with saliva. Classmate Ziopan saw his predicament and took the initiative to invite Stanley to share his lunch. There was a hint of joy in Stanley's heart, but when he was about to take the flying cake given by Xiao Chuan, a fly swatter reached out to stop him. The man scolded Stanley for not bringing his own bento, why he always eats other people bento. Stanley said that he was going to buy lunch with the money his mother gave, but after Stanley left, the man ate the chubby pancake for himself, piece by piece. Stanley, who was kicked out of the classroom, went to the tap and poured tap water into his mouth, but he didn't care if he was full. After a few urinations, Stanley was hungry again. He could only borrow a few sips of water from his classmates. He didn't have any money to buy lunch, and he didn't even dare to look at the snacks in the store at a glance. The man who kicked out Stanley was the big tyrant in the school and was very gluttonous. When a student opened the bento box in class, he could smell it. He never brought meals when he came to school, but unlike Stanley, he directly asked his colleagues in the office for it. He's totally not good at teaching students. Stanley and his dismayed had a bit of a conflict over the boundaries of the desks. Stanley writes with his left hand, while his dismayed uses his right hand, so he often gets together. But the great tyrant solution to this problem is to let Stanley give up writing with his left hand, saying that writing with the left hand is wrong, and writing with the right hand is the right way. If there are bad teachers, there are good teachers. Rosie is such a good teacher. She is smiling, kind, and often gives positive encouragement to students. For the contradiction between Stanley and the same table, Rossi let the two exchange positions to solve the problem. Stanley likes Mr. Rosie very much, and often looks at her from a distance, and even Stanley remembers Mr. Rosie's birthday clearly. Stanley recited a poem fluently in class for teacher Rosie and wished her a happy birthday. Rosie burst into tears and gave Stanley a chunk of chocolate as a reward. Stanley did not eat alone, but shared this piece of chocolate with his classmates. Because the previous flu problem delayed many classes, the school decided to give students three more classes a day, which meant that students would have to stay in school for longer. Bring an extra box of bento, which is a great thing for the big tyrant. He was blessed again. This day, the big tyrant was eyeing Xiao Chuan's new bento with a height of four floors. He thought that there must be a lot of delicious food in it. In order to eat the chubby bento, the big tyrant refused the bread given by his colleagues, deliberately spared his stomach for this lunch, and stared at the time while he was in class. As soon as the bell rang, he hurried to Zia Pang's class, but when he came to the classroom, Fatty and the others had already eaten their lunch. The tyrant was furious. Seeing Stanley, who was still licking his fingers, the tyrant was even more angry. He reprimanded Stanley for never bringing a lunchbox and always eating other people's lunches. It was because of Stanley that he had no food to eat. Of Stanley was devastated. Since that day, Stanley hadn't eaten with Fatty and the others, and the big tyrant took the opportunity to occupy their lunch. Stanley would sneak out every time during lunchtime, and when asked by his classmates, he said that he wanted to go home to eat the hot meal that his mother made, but he could still be seen gulps of water in class. Classmate Xiao He thought it was very strange, so he secretly followed Stanley, only to find that Stanley didn't go home to eat at all, but was hanging out on the street. After Ziopan found out, he asked Stanley why he lied. It turned out that Stanley's parents had gone out of town, and no one would cook for him. Fatty immediately decided that they would pack Stanley's lunch before Stanley's mother came back, but what about the big tyrant? They have their own tricks. As soon as lunchtime came, the big tyrant appeared in the classroom on time, but there was not a single student in the classroom, and after looking around, he couldn't find Xiao Chuan and Stanley. There is no way. 
At noon that day, he could only eat the meals of his new colleagues. The next day, the big tyrant stared at Xiao Pang and asked him where he went to eat yesterday. Zia Palm replied they were afraid of dirtying the classroom, so they went under the stairs to eat. The great tyrant listened, it also makes sense, but when he came down the stairs the next day, there was no sign of fatty again. Xiao Hei said that there were already two or three people there, so they moved to the playground for dinner. Another day, the big tyrant trotted all the way to the playground, but after a circle, he didn't see Xiao Chuan. Every time it was time to eat, Zia Pan and the others would change places, and the big tyrant was played around by them, and these days the big tyrant eats all the vegetarian dishes brought by his new colleagues, and he is very upset. Finally, at noon that day, the big tyrant discovered the base of Zia Pan and Stanley, this time on the rooftop. He, who had never been played like this before, angrily walked up to the students and yelled at them as bed bugs. As for Stanley, the tyrant even said that if he didn't bring a lunchbox, he couldn't come to school, and he told Stanley to get out. Since then, Stanley's seat has been empty. Without Stanley, the mood of the little friends is very low and they have no appetite to eat. On this day, the school sent students to participate in the inter-school concert, but there was no suitable candidate for the selection. The friends thought of Stanley, but when they called Stanley's mother on their mobile phones, it showed that the other party was an empty number. The friends all drew the head of the big tyrant on the workbook to express their disgust for the big tyrant. It was because of the great tyrant that Stanley didn't dare to come to school and miss the registration for the concert. Fortunately, some classmates saw Stanley on the road. It turned out that Stanley had been one wandering near the school, but he did not dare to come in. Only then did Xia Hei tell him about the concert, and handed over the registration address of the concert to Stanley. Although he knew that he had missed the opportunity to sign up, Stanley still came to practice every day, and his efforts and talents were seen by the teacher. Finally, Stanley was successfully invited to the concert. He happily returned to school and told his friends the good news. The friends applauded for him, and he also said that there would be an even bigger surprise tomorrow. The next day, Stanley walks to school with a rusted lunch box, and that's what he's talking about as a surprise. He put the bento boxes in front of the tyrant, saying that this is the bento he brought, and asked the tyrant, can he come to school? The great tyrant lowered his head in shame and wiped away his tears. After Mr. Rossi found out, he reported the incident of the great tyrant to the school. The great tyrant finally left a letter of repentance and resigned, and left the school. The inter-school concert was held as scheduled, and Stanley, who danced gracefully on the stage, received rounds of applause from the audience. After the concert, Rosie always wanted to take Stanley home. Stanley said that his mother was waiting for her in the car opposite, but he turned around and followed the principal in a taxi home. However, just after returning home, Stanley was greeted by a man slap. Don't you know it's Sunday? There are more guests today, don't you know? It turned out that Stanley's parents had already died in a car accident, and Stanley was entrusted to his uncle to take care of him, rather than taking care of it. It's more child labor in the uncle's restaurant. Although he was beaten, Stanley was still very happy, and his performance was affirmed by everyone. He put away his school bag, and he was busy in the back kitchen, serving tea, pouring water, and washing dishes, in the middle of the night, when all the guests left. Stanley packed up the leftovers as his lunch the next day. After eating, he laid a quilt on the kitchen table and prepared to go to bed. Before going to bed every day, he would light a candle in front of the photo of his father and mother. The candle lighted up, and he could see that his mother looked very much like Mr. Rossi. It turned out that Stanley liked Mr. Rossi so much because he regarded her as a spiritual sustenance. The next day, Stanley got up early again full of energy. He brought the bento to the school. He was very proud. Today, it is not your bento, but my Stanley bento. He brought the bento to many people in the school, often including his classmates and teachers. Whenever someone praised this bento for being delicious, Stanley would laugh and say that his mother made it. Stanley has lied a lot. The bruises on his face were not caused by beating bad guys. His book was not torn by his sister, and his bento was not made by his mother. These lies are maintaining his little dignity, and it may be these lies that keep Stanley optimistic and friendly in this difficult life, and his optimism and friendliness is worthy of being treated tenderly by the world.